All right. Uh, so I'm going to start with uh, introducing Lavanya. Um, uh, so Lavanya is a writer and an illustrator of books for children of all ages, including the Dreamer series of biographies and the Ninja Nani graphic novels for the delayed readers. Uh, she has written over 20 picture books, chapter books, and novels and illustrated for leading publishers of Indian Kid Lit. And personally, I am a big fan. And I loved the book that we are here to talk about, uh, The Girl Who Loved to Sing, uh, Tijin Bai. And I can't wait to get into talking more about the book with you. But uh, before we start off with that, I want to talk a little bit about uh, you and your process because uh, you are a rare combination of a writer and an illustrator. And that makes the way you tell a story very unique. And so tell us a little bit about your process and how you bring the two together. Uh, hi, uh, first off, thanks, Sanjana, for that lovely introduction. And thank you very much for having me on this uh, panel today. Uh, I have to say I have no process because it, it's different with each book. Uh, I find that uh, the book dictates uh, the illustrations, first off, mm. and uh, also the process. Because uh, when I'm writing The Dreamers, it is this deep dive in each case into a person's life. Yeah. And uh, I'm a great fan of rabbit holes. So I do all kinds of parallel reading. For instance, the book on Satyajit Rai took me all over the place. I was reading not about him, but also about cinema, about uh, Bengal in that era. Um, and uh, it is very difficult to you know, focus finally and come back to the job at hand, which is an extremely small book of some 600 odd words, yeah. uh, where the pictures have to uh, do a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, so essentially, I would have to say I have no process. It's really <laughs> dictated by the story, by... Uh, by the narrative. Ninja Nani, for instance, uh, sometimes starts off with visuals, sometimes mm. starts off with a single word that just, you know, extends and telescopes into a whole novel. So I yeah. can never say for sure what's going to happen. Mm. Well, fair enough. Uh, so, so let's talk a little bit more about the Dreamer series in general before we get into the specific book. Um, what inspired the series? Like, what, how did the uh, sort of idea take birth? And how did that come about? Well, actually, I have for a very long time wanted to write uh, biographies, picture book biographies about people that have astounded me with their uh, craft, but of whom very little is known. Tijan mm. Bai, for instance, I have been amazed by since I was a teenager. And I first heard her sing on television on the Festival of India, you know, one of those late night uh, telecasts. Mm. And I still get goosebumps listening to her. And I still, I've, I've heard, I've pre watched pretty much everything there is of her on YouTube and I still get goosebumps and uh, no one has heard of her. And yeah. I felt that I wanted to tell these stories. Again, I am so taken by the, uh, you know, the words and the, the life of R. K. Narayan, of R. K. Lakshman, uh, Satyajit Rai. But uh, beyond the fact that, you know, yes, they are famous people, they're remarkable Indians. They are part of school syllabus, you know, information, you know, famous Indians. Yeah. But what has led them to these remarkable careers? Uh, who were they as children? I think these are all things that we need to talk about. And I, for one, was ecstatic to be able to explore them in this series. Hmm. Uh, I would have to say, yes, that Tijan Bai was the spark that started the whole Dreamer series for me. Okay. And I, I hope it goes on for like, you know, lots of books. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, talking about biographies in general, because uh, all of these are biographies, it, it, I know that biographies involve a great deal of research. And like you said, you go down a rabbit hole of just reading up and uh, exploring what they were all about. And so what kind of research went into writing about Tijan Bhai? Uh, well, first off, there's hardly anything, you know, written yeah, about her. Or, so most of it was, A, I started with my memories of her. And then, of course, YouTube, which is perhaps where the most uh, extensive uh, documentation of her life and work art okay. and uh, though I believe there is now a movie in the work in, in the making there is a Bollywood film that's being made of her so yay <laughs> uh, but essentially it's in YouTube and newspaper articles that have started my research uh, I mean is, that's pretty much where my research began and ended in the case okay. of Tijan Bai. All right so uh, so a bit writing for children especially with um, you know, with Tijan Bai there are a lot of like heavier portions of someone's life that you need to balance out and how do you sort of uh, you know her fight for uh, to sing and just to get that chance to sing is unimaginable and I'm sure you left out a bunch of stuff but how do you sort of balance that and tell walk that line to tell a story for children yeah it's it is uh, it's it's a very very difficult task each time and I am never sure if I've done it right 
Hmm. But I felt the focus uh, perhaps had to be on um, uh, her achievements, on what she succeeded with rather than focusing on the abuse. And while it is hinted upon in the words and in the illustrations, yeah. uh, I have definitely kept it kind of very, very, uh, uh, very spare. Hmm. Uh, and again, uh, I would like people to, after reading this book, to go and discover her work and her life for themselves. Uh, so I yes, I mean, uh, I, I have, I, I would say, yeah, each time it's a very difficult task. Yeah, uh, I can to, imagine. Uh, to no, yeah, to decide what to leave out. Yeah, because because where do you how do you realize whether you're doing it justice or what your what parts whether I'm leaving something important out and how do you just um, get to that? But uh, yeah, because in this uh, while it led me to at the end of it wanting to read a little bit more about her and uh, you know read up uh, and get to know her a little more. So no, uh, mission accomplished on that. So um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about. Um, uh, the art in uh, specific because the art is just gorgeous in this and uh, did you always imagine drawing it with elements of the art of uh, the wheels or was it something that came about later uh, well with this whole series i've tried to uh, you know draw some inspiration from something from an art form that was very specific to uh, the person i'm talking about Okay. Uh, again, it is not like a direct, I'm not trying to imitate the style or you know, mimic hmm. it blindly, rather than just take certain elements or yeah. an inspiration so that the uh, illustrations kind of hint at rather than, you know, uh, copy the yeah, art, absolutely. because I think that would also be quite improper to just copy a, a folk art form uh, blindly. So yeah. it is more a hint of than, uh, you know, the actual, the, the style itself. And okay. uh, I, I could show you a, a couple of... Yes, please. Uh, if I could just share my screen, I'd uh, so um okay. so it's really um a very contemporary style still of art, uh, yeah. but with certain elements, uh, a very you know, the kind of uh, the colors. The, the flat colors and uh, a very simple color scheme that I used for the books. Mm. Uh, some elements of the decorative form, um, and uh, which I will repeat. Uh, one uh, one aspect of uh, the Bhil art that I really uh, I was very fascinated by was the fact that each artist, uh, while you create a certain format, uh, you create also an a, a certain pattern that is distinctly your own. Yeah, which is something that I did do in this book. So I think I'll I, I leave that for readers to look at the pictures and you know see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But uh, these are the elements that I really explored while drawing the book. And of course, keeping a very minimal uh, color palette as well, which I felt was most striking for uh, either story told and the, uh, you know, the, the size and the dimensions of the book as well. So it's... Uh, I think that's like a, a yeah. bit of a gist of what I meant. Yeah, so which is what, and just by a few, uh, which is what struck me so much about the art was just the way you've used eyes and the way just the eyes have uh, brought about the expression of uh, her and like the one with all of them staring at her uh, when she's trying to sing is just, uh, is just, it stands out and speaks volumes uh, than, you know, something that you would have gone into drawing like a thing. It's just, uh, which is what I found really striking about the art. So, uh, yeah. Uh, all right, so, um, and uh, like you said, not enough uh, books are being written about, uh, you know, biographies and from history, like not enough uh, people are writing his uh, books for kids that are based on history. There are some, uh, but not a lot. Uh, so what sort of got you interested in, uh, in history specifically and biographies? Uh, okay, uh, as I said, uh, you know, I think every writer is fascinated with biographies. I think, I don't know a certain person, uh, a single writer who is not fascinated by both history and biographies yeah. actually. And uh, just the, uh, well, with this series, it was really uh, finding aspects of their life, of their early lives that are not really talked about. Uh, in fact, I would say that right now, it's perhaps the golden age of biographies. I think there are yeah. so many to be read and so many fantastic ones. So I wouldn't say no one is writing biographies yeah. at all. It's quite the opposite. Uh, but what I was really uh, interested in was the childhoods 
Mm. Uh, because uh, when you're writing for kids, uh, to kids, all adults are, you know, we are immortal and we are powerful. And of course, we can achieve whatever we want. But I think what, what you want to, you know, find commonalities with is what these people were like as kids. Because that's when you're powerless. That's when you have fears. I think yeah. you are most identifiable with when you are a child, with, you know, to, to a child reader. So I wanted to focus this entire series on the childhoods of the people mm. I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, look yeah. at so the pivotal you, events that led them on to their journey. Yeah, so, so what do you hope like a kid would take away from uh, reading these books? Like at the end of the book, what do you hope that the uh, kid closes the book and has uh, with him? Ooh, tough question. <laughs> well, A, I would say an interest in the person themselves to be able to go and find out for themselves who these remarkable people are. Yeah. And again, learn from these journeys as in uh, we are all the same when it comes to fear and it comes to, uh, you know, the barriers that we feel that we face um, and the way society treats certain sections of uh, yeah. society. I mean, not much has really changed for, for a lot of people. And to be able to, uh, uh, you know, identify, recognize those, those uh, disadvantages too. Hmm. And uh, I'd like to say that each book has an element of hope in them. Yeah. Uh, to say that regardless of what their lives, their beginnings are, they go on to have these most fruitful and, uh, you know, rich careers. And uh, I think just just that that trajectory sometimes uh, is something that a, a child can, um, you know, identify with or hmm. learn from. All right. Okay. Uh, so uh, what, are, what are some of your uh, favorite biographies? If you had to pick like your top three, uh, Favorite biographies written by other people. Um, biographies. Oh, that's a tough one. There are so many because you know among the picture books, uh, picture book series. In yeah. So let's one. pick only for written for kids. Written for kids. Oh, okay. Um. Well, uh, this is a tough one. There are so many, <laughs> but I would have to say that you know uh, there, there is Zakir, for instance, uh, the new one by Sandhya Rao. I love that one. Okay. Uh, Tulika has done the series of art. Uh, focuses on artists that again very very enjoyable and uh, uh, in, in other publishers there's a whole series on uh, artists by Barb Rosenstock which okay. are slightly more dense I mean there's a lot of information and mm. those are books you really need to uh, research you need to go and you know look at the artist's life to really totally understand mm. but those are books again that you know play the art and the, the, the text very very beautifully so I would say right. those are my tips okay uh, so, uh, while you were doing research uh, for uh, Tejan Rai, is, are there any parts of her life, some incidents or stories from her life that didn't make it to the book? Because, of course, uh, this is for kids and you only have so many uh, pages to, words to uh, use. So, uh, what parts of uh, her life or incidents that really stuck with you that uh, got left out and you could share? Uh, she, has, she, lived, she has lived a life of horrific abuse. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, being born a girl child in the 1950s in rural India uh, is extremely tough. And, you know, uh, survival, many, many children do not make it. Uh, she herself was actually left for dead, apparently. There's a story that when she was just a few days old, there was a, a stray dog carried her out of her hut and, uh, you know, the, the child was found outside. And there was a whole week when they just assumed she wasn't going to make it. Hmm. But she did, in fact, uh, recover and... Uh, you know, went on to become the powerhouse that she is. Um, she was married early. She was married off early to a man, much older person who was already, he had, you know, several wives. Uh, there has been a lot of physical abuse, of course. Uh, these are all documented in interviews, in articles written about her. Uh, and she chose to walk away from that marriage because, you know, it, it was, uh, circumstances were just too uh, difficult for her to live there. Uh, she would then also be excommunicated by the village she lived in, by her family, simply because she wanted to sing. Uh, so she has lived a life of extreme uh, uh, difficulty. And mm. the fact that she is who she is today, you know, known across the world by just her name, uh, tells you, you know, an immense amount about the courage that she had even as a child. Yeah. Because she hit the you know, headlines when she was 13, 14. That is when she became this singer known across the state for her singing. And then she would go on to hit the Festival of India, uh, you know, the limelight in the Festival of India. Uh, I would say that's a story of amazing courage, despite the adversity she faced. Yeah. 
but okay so um so could you tell us uh, what is next in the dreamer series is it is that uh, like all hush hush or can you tell us who you have planned this is a question that i must ask my editor <laughs> but there are lots of people i would say let me just sort of broadly hint without giving you actual names all right uh, but there are people in so many fields uh, that uh, you know that i would like to celebrate and of course research and read about in the mm. um so i would say yes there are lots of people in, in all kinds of very different fields uh in film of course in um uh in the natural sciences so uh, watch the space all right you <laughs> just say okay uh so we are going to open up um uh, questions from the audience in a bit so if you all have any questions please uh do uh, ask them um in the meantime i am going to ask you a couple of more uh, questions uh, what okay so if you had to uh, out of these uh, out of the ones the books that have already released in the dreamer series uh, if you had to um, pick your favorite the one that you had to uh, you really love the working on uh, which one would it be oh impossible because each one like i said was a rabbit hole yeah i can imagine so each one has been such a journey uh mm. with the case of uh, the one of dr janaki amal yeah. i actually got in touch with her grand niece oh wow so it has started this wonderful relationship with a person who actually knew dr janaki amal but uh each one is a favorite in its own way i just cannot choose but i have to say that while i was working on the arthur narayan book the one mm. that arthur narayan i have to say that as a writer i shared his despair because the book is essentially his despair at never making it as a writer you know as a mm. young man and i felt very close to that feeling of you know that utter that low the sense of desperation we all feel it as writers so mm. i have to say that uh, i i knew what arkin narayan was going through through the course through the journey of that book and uh, of course each uh, like i said each book is a journey of its own but this perhaps uh, i think i felt closest to being a fellow writer all right okay um i don't know if we have any questions yet uh not um as yet okay so so what do you uh, uh, uh oh, what okay so while you were talking about um uh, the art of tijan bai and how you sort of uh, came about that process and uh, stuff uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, the art that you uh, used in the other because all of them uh, the covers are sort of you know have that uh, two color palette and so uh, how did uh, you distinct uh, make a distinction between all the other books and sort of uh, uh, work on the art to get them looking so different uh, from each other Well, in each case, like I said, I was drawing on the lives and uh, you know elements from their uh, stories to influence mm. the art that I made. In the case of Satyajit Ray, uh, it was he was himself an extremely talented uh, graphic designer, an artist. Okay. So I really, yeah. So it was his art that I really uh, drew from inspiration from. And if you ha- if you're aware of his art or his posters, you might see elements of you know things that I've used or things I've ripped off from while I was making. my drawings there are very distinctive posters when he uses silhouettes for example or uh, there are these very uh, distinctive uh, illustrations from his father sukumar rai's books all of which kind of find a little nook in the book and yeah. uh, I'll, i'll be great it'll be great if you know if, if there are readers who identify who can identify i mean i would love to hear from people who uh, you know who are satyajit rai fans like i am if, uh, and it, I, what i would really like is for kids to sort of get hooked on to uh this journey that i've been on and to go and discover sukumar rai and sanjeev rai for themselves the books on rk narayan and rk lakshman of course they are inspired by rk lakshman's art so there are again elements uh ways in which he positions characters the way he draws backdrops a certain uh, you know mm. those are those are what i was inspired by for those books and again the janaki amal it was more uh, you know botanical art from you know the 19th century uh just ways of uh, in since there's a lot of the natural world that's drawn in the book most okay. of it is in a the entire book is set in a mangrove uh, forest so uh, it's essentially just drawing off botanical art of that okay. era hmm. so each book is different uh, okay 
All right. So uh, in uh, the book, in this book, in Tijan Bai, every time she's uh, sort of singing, the uh, uh, something that stood out uh, for me was the words that you used, uh, like the Junjuni uh, and the Pagal Pana. Like she, you know, uh, you use those to sort of bring out how she's uh, singing and what she's uh, uh, feeling in that moment. So um, how did how did that uh, process come about, and how did you sort of do, how did those words stand out? Why those words? Those are actually words that she uses. Okay. She use, those are the words she uses to describe her passion. The electric feeling, the junjuni when she hears uh, the Pandavni song. And the Pagal Pana is when she begins singing. She says she still feels it. She's 65. But each time she uh, gets up on stage, she says it. She says, Pagal Pana is what she feels. And the Sana Nana is again. If you were to go to YouTube and listen to her sing, that is how she begins each of her performances. So okay. it is simply drawn from uh, her real life. All right. Um, okay. So another um, another thing with her is, is what I've also uh, realized is in the uh, book and uh, in Janaki Amal's story, uh, 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 like when we were working on uh, something on her life as well for a, a comic book, we uh, what stood out in a lot of these stories is uh, this. Um, one person who sort of stands out, uh, who's standing behind you and sort of uh, being this uh, constant supporter. Uh, and uh, just, you need that one person to say, uh, you can do it. So uh, who would be your, uh, for this series? Who would be your strongest supporter for this series? My editor, Shani. <laughs> All right. <laughs> in, in Absolutely. What... <laughs> in every way, I think, from the word go. I mean, from the, from the when I wrote, first uh, brought the subject up, she has, uh, I think she has been my uh, constant support. She, she has been the person uh, that I'm constantly discussing ideas with uh, that, uh, you know, yeah. I would say entirely. Editors. Edit. Yay. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, Bijal has a, we have a couple of questions. Bijal has a question. Uh, uh, you recently took Dreamers to Bukaru. So tell us how your readers reacted to those, uh, the stories over there. Well, uh, it was a it was a great fun session because uh, it was uh, it was a great experience for me as well because I was introducing uh, character uh, you know people that most of the kids hadn't really heard about. Uh, mm. It was a great experience and fun, and I discovered that I was delving into you know fun aspects of Arkin Narayan's life, for instance, telling them background information about uh, the entire family, not just the two brothers. Uh, likewise with uh, Janaki Amal, and uh, it led to a lot of interesting questions about them, about uh, the way I wrote the books as well. So it was a great time. Okay. Tell us some uh, things that stood out, some things that kids said after you, after the session or during the session that sort of stood out because uh, kids' reactions, I feel like they are just the most honest reactions. Uh, that yeah, we can well, get. Uh, yeah, because in, again, with my session, I was asking, it was an interactive session. So I was asking the kids what they would like to be, hmm. what were things that they enjoy doing or things that they were told not to do. And of course, there were the usual, you know, eating too much pizza, not being allowed to watch television. And uh, again, when it came to the kind of ambitions they had or the kind of things they hoped, to, the dreams they had of, uh, you know, for when they were older, it was great fun because someone said a doctor, someone said, I want to be Miss Universe and an architect. Okay. And uh, it's amazing, astronauts, lawyers, it, the, the list was endless. So it's nice to see kids being so aware of the world and uh, still dreaming. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, uh, this this just brings me to another question. While while we are, we have another question from Lena, but you already uh, sort of uh, um, uh, we've already gone through that question about the uh, Pagal Pana and the Jubilee, the words that you used. So uh, what I want to ask you is that um, what were what were you as a, how was your childhood? What did you always imagine yourself um, writing and drawing uh, when you uh, grew up, or how was your uh, well, I am doing now what I pretty much did as a child, which was I used to be huddled in a corner of my uh, of my room, drawing and writing. So okay. nothing has really changed. Uh, <laughs> but did you always dream of just doing this? I did. Though I did, of course, like you know, most people of my generation, the second you have an impossible dream like this, you are gently nudged towards a more profitable career, yeah. and, which I did do. And I spent a couple of decades doing just that. But uh, well, here I am, back. At square one, doing exactly what I was doing when I was eight and nine. <laughs> well, yay to that because uh, that just gives hope that you can uh, 
keep that dream going. But uh, yeah, so uh, we have another five uh, minutes if anybody has uh, any questions at all. Um, so far, we don't. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lavanya. Thank you so much for discussing your process to show us and just for these uh, books. Thank you for these books and uh, and congratulations on being nominated. So, uh, and really, it's been such an, uh, a great pleasure to talk to you. And uh, yeah, thank you for thank writing. You. Thank you, Sanjana. Thanks for having me on this panel. Thank you so much.